Welcome to the Polgar Chess University. The theme of our lesson this week will be the weakness of the back rank. Let's see our first example. Here we go. Well, what we're talking about is that the black king, while it certainly looks safe being on g8, protected by the three pawns in front of it, at the same time those very three pawns on f7, g7, and h7, take away, limit the king's potential escape upwards. On the other hand, the limitation of the chessboard doesn't allow the black king to move back towards an imaginary ninth rank. Therefore, the only thing that's left for the black king is to move left or right. However, that would be no help if either the white rook or queen would get down to the 8th rank, for example, to c8 or e8, attacking black's king. The game would be over. It's important to note that if black would succeed in getting, for example, the rook back to a8 and guard those potential entry points of white, or open up making a little escape window for the black king, through h7, black would have certainly no problem. Also, if you look at the material scale of the position, we'll notice that black is up a knight, while white only has a pawn as compensation. So here the task is, how can white gain material using the back rank weakness of blacks? Try to think and figure out the correct solution for yourself. If white would try to make some quiet moves such as rook d1 and try to get into the 8th rank through the d-file, that would not really work because the black queen is already guarding it. And even if it wouldn't be, black would have the time to bring a defense to that square. Therefore, white in the starting position must act right now and energetically. And that solution is capturing black's knight. Well, what do we see right now? White captured a knight, so that's certainly a good thing, and turned around the balance, the material balance in the position. As of now, white has an extra pawn. However, this, of course, is based on something very important, namely the fact that the black knight now is unable to capture the white queen because that would allow white rook to come down, check black king, and black would delay getting checkmated only by blocking the check with the queen and that the white rook would capture immediately and end the game. So in this case, what we saw was that white uses the tactical motive, the back rank weakness of blacks, to gain material. Of course, after queen captures the knight on e4, black by no means is forced to capture the white queen. In fact, if they know better, they wouldn't. But they should take care of the threat. And the threat is, again, for the queen to come down on e8 and to checkmate. So how could black respond to this without any further loss of material? Well, I have to say, it's not with the black rook coming to a8, because that the white queen would capture. Black could, for example, open up a little window by playing h6 or g6. Those could be some of the potential moves to avoid getting checkmated. Let's move on to our next example. Here we go. In this position, there is an unbalanced position. White is down material, if we look. White has no queen, although white has two extra rooks. However, black also has a knight, which white doesn't have. So black is ahead. And in addition, the white rook is under attack by black's bishop. In such situations, the most common response is, after we notice that our rook is under attack, let's see where we move our rook. And that's certainly a good 
thought. However, when you see a natural good response, look around and see if is there an even better response. In this case, if the white rook would move, for example, to f1 attacking black screen, the game would go on, but black would maintain the material advantage and eventually, playing correctly, would win the game. Here White missed the great opportunity to turn things around and lead in the material balance. And again, it is all connected to Black's weakness on the back rank. Again, we can see the Black King being in a seemingly very safe position on B8. However, the three pawns in front of it not only save it, not only defend it, but also limits its escape. Again, it only becomes important if White succeeds to get his own rook to the 8th rank to attack that black king. And here, White has a very good move. And that is to create a discovered attack by moving the bishop to h3. Let's see what is happening right now. On one hand, the g file has been opened and the rook is about to capture the knight on g8. On the other hand, the white bishop attacks black's queen. So see, as this is a dual attack, and black needs to choose which way to go, which one of the two unpleasant threats to allow. Sadly for black, black cannot defend against both of them. If black right now captures white's rook, then white bishop would capture the black queen, and all of a sudden, white would have a significant material advantage. Unfortunately for black, the queen has no good move that would save the queen as well as the knight on g8, and more importantly, the entry point to the back rank. For example, if black could capture his own pawn on h7, which obviously he cannot, everything would be fine. But in this case, black does not have that option. And for example, if the queen captures the bishop, rook indeed captures the knight with a check. And then black's best option is to block the check, rook captures, king captures. And now white has an extra three points, having an extra rook and pawn versus black's bishop. So what a turnaround from black having the material advantage all of a sudden, after bishop h3, white comes up ahead. You may wonder, does bishop e4 does the same job? Seemingly it does, because it still attacks the black queen, it still opens up the g-file, and the white rook is about to come down to g8. And indeed, if the black queen captures the white bishop, white will win. Or if the black knight tries to run away, black loses the queen. Or if the black bishop captures the rook, then white bishop captures queen. So all of that is great and beautiful. However, in this case, unlike when the bishop went to h3, the queen does have a square where it can go to a safe place and protect the knight on g8. Can you see that move? And yes, indeed, that move is queen to c8. And now, black is completely safe. Let's see our next example. Here we go. Well, what do we see right now in this position? Each side has a queen, a rook, a pair of uh, minor pieces on the board, and white and black have equal number of pawns. So, materially speaking, everything is even. We can also see how the black king seems to be in a very dangerous position with white having a pawn on c6 and if it wasn't for the white knight on a6, white would be ready to checkmate right away on a8. The problem is that right now it is black's turn. If it would be white's turn, the white knight could just retreat to b4 or even c5 opening up the A file and black would be in a devastating position. However, as we said, it is black's turn and now black can actually develop a devastating attack. Try to think what may that move be. 
And the answer to that question is bringing the rook down to d1. Well, looks like a harmless move as the white rook is protected on c1. However, the reality is that now black is threatening to checkmate in just two moves. Always look out for the forceful moves. Because forceful moves don't allow quiet moves such as, for example, retreating the knight to b4. In that case, black immediately would keep white busy by checking and capturing on c1, leaving white with only one option to recapture, and then black would arrive first, giving a back rank checkmate. Same story, the white pawns in front of the king don't allow the escape upwards, and of course the limitation of the chessboard stops the king's escape back. Let's go back one more time and see what else could happen after rook d1. Well, if the white rook captures the black rook on d1 right now, black queen recaptures, checkmating. And the only other option potentially white could have is to protect the c1 rook by one of the other pieces. But right now, that is not an option for white as the queen going to f4 would be captured right away, and there are no other pieces that could protect on c1. Another option may be for white to try is to try protecting the e1 square. As if right now, black trades the rooks on c1, trying to give the same checkmate that we've seen before, queen e1, the white queen would control that square. Now, black needs to make another good move, forcing the issue. In this case, black would be ready to still exchange the rooks, and then after king takes back, since queen e1 doesn't work, black could just simply capture the knight on a6. Importantly, after queen f8, it's not a checkmate because the bishop can block. And now black is a bishop up. It's important to notice that after rook d1 and queen b4, the more powerful looking queen f1 would be a major mistake. At first it seems that this move kind of pushes white to trade the rooks, which would result in an immediate checkmate after the black queen recaptures. However, this would allow an unexpected check. The queen swinging from the queen side to the king side checking black's king and attacking black's rook a second time. Now, when the black king moves out, rook takes rook, and black is in a resignable position. Okay, so as we learned after queen b4, the correct move was to trade the rooks immediately and then just grab the knight on a6. Okay, let's continue on with another example on our same theme. Well, let's look at this position and first recognize what's going on in the position. Everything seems to be hanging, the queens, the rooks, the knight, and so on. But the most important thing to realize is that black right now is in a check and therefore cannot capture the white rook on c1 or the knight on d3. Black needs to react to the check. It's important to remember that whenever you're being checked, it does not mean that you should search for your king and move it. You may have other and better options than moving the king. In fact, here, moving the king would be a major, major mistake, as then the white queen would just simply capture the black queen on c2. Blocking the check would be, of course, bad for the same reason. However, in this case, the correct move is to capture our attacker. Black captures the white queen. Not only that the black king is no longer in check, but white cannot avoid losing significant material. And if white is trying to recapture with a the knight, then rook captures rook is not only a check, but it's even a checkmate. Again, for the same reason, the back rank checkmate that the king has no retreat to the back because of the limitation of the chessboard. Here, of course, there is an additional element in that the black knight on c4 
is guarding the B2 square. So it's not just the limitation of the board and the white pawns, but the black knight is also an important participant in creating the checkmate. And we're ready for our next example. Here we are. In this position, things are slightly different. White has blocked the check with the bishop on g1, so white avoided the back rank checkmate. However, there is a quite fancy move here that can guarantee the win for black. Also, we better realize that white is up a rook. So if black misses the opportunity in finding this brilliant move, white will be in a winning situation. As usual, try to take your time and figure out what do you think is the correct move here for black. And right now, the answer is playing bishop to h3. Black is going all out with all three of its pieces attacking that same g2 pawn, g2 square, about to checkmate white's king. The point is that if pawn captures h3, the bishop, then would come queen takes queen, check, and the white king is cornered, literally, and white can only delay getting checkmated by one more move. Let's move on. Here we go. In this position, black seems to be in a difficult position, in that the queen is under attack by the rook, as well as the black rook on d8 is under attack by white's queen. Moreover, white has an extra knight and pawn. Nevertheless, thanks to the weakness of the back rank of white's, black is the one that can force the win here, force, in fact, checkmating in just two moves. Finding the correct move is to sacrifice the queen giving white only one option, and then bringing the rook down, checkmate. Very nice. Here, as we can see, the white knight is in the way of escape, and therefore white is checkmated. Going back to the starting position, I would like to point out that another move, rook d1, that seems to work at first, or it certainly works if the rook captures the black queen, does not work because white can simply protect itself, protect the rook by knight g3 and now black's attack is over. So first always try to look for forceful moves. See if there is a way to immediately force your opponent what you want him or her to do and then if a checkmate is around, especially when there is a back rank weakness on the board. Let's move on. Here we are. In this position there is a complete material balance. White has a rook on d8 hanging and the queens are also about to be traded. The black rook is safe, the king is protecting it and so is the black queen which is protected by the pawn on b5. Nevertheless in this position also if white finds the correct move Thanks to black's back rank weakness, white can win major material. And that move is to move the queen up simply, to attack black's rook a second time. If rook takes rook, queen takes back and the black king again has no escape. Or if black opens up a little window, escape for the king, then black simply lost the rook for no compensation whatsoever. Let's see another example. In this case, black has huge material advantage, having still the queen on the board, and more importantly, black is about to give white a background checkmate on c1 or d1, and in addition, the knight is hanging on e4. Another important element to notice in this position is that the white rook on g3 is pinning the pawn on g7. Always be aware of any pins existing in the position. Sometimes they don't matter, but many times it actually leads to a decisive answer, like in this case. Here, the correct move is for white to play knight f6 check. 
because of that pin, the pawn cannot capture the knight, leaving black only with one choice, moving the king, and then rook takes rook, all of a sudden checkmates. Simple, but very effective. And the next example, black has an extra knight, but here the key participants are white's two rooks and the little pawn on h6. With that little pawn's help, the white rook on the seventh rank succeeds to chase the black king to the corner, most importantly away from the rook on f8, and then rook takes rook checkmates. In all of these examples, we have seen different methods in achieving the goal, which is to give a back rank checkmate. In some cases, it was deflecting a piece. In other cases, it was chasing the king to the corner. In others, sacrificing material. And as we shall see in the last example, it may even involve a simple quiet move. And this is our last example for this lesson. Black seems to be doing good, having still the queen on the board and three passed pawns running down the aisles. However, if white finds the correct move, black is hopeless. And here it involves the famous two rook ladder checkmate. The rook coming to d7, and amazingly black absolutely has no defense against the white rook coming down on the c file, checkmating black's king. Thank you for listening, and so long until next week. Mm -hmm.